Books of Life For quite a few years, I've been in the midst of it, and finally, I've come to realize that life is nothing more than a great big book. It is broken up into segments of time, and if you have a moment to spare, I will provide you the opportunity to look. The second you came into this world, that is when your book of life began and it was represented by a single letter of the alphabet. As you moved along from minute to minute, more letters came together to form a word and the beginning to understand you was now set. Once an hour of your life had passed, your letters and words formed into sentences and the communication from you was much more clear. Time keeps on moving and a day in your life is made up of many paragraphs and from each, a message we hear. From a second to seven days later, you made it through the first week and all your paragraphs came together to make up the first chapter in your earthly stay. Just like that, a week increased to a month and that first chapter of your life developed into a short story, one might say. Your book of life began to get thicker and within a year, all your short stories that made up your life became a best-selling novel in its own right. Each year of your existence, the cycle repeated itself. Within the library of life, your books are placed on the shelves to be seen day or night. Where do you think your books are in this library of life and do you think they are constantly being read? Do you think the stories of your life are interesting or unique in some kind of way and are you happy with the life you have led? The library of life have many categories and you can be of certainty that your books are on the appropriate shelf. Even though you may have more books in this library of life, are they all painting a pretty picture of yourself? Can you honestly stand here or there and say that each one of your books have made you proud? If you so truly believe this, you should pat yourself on the back and then praise yourself out loud. Hello, this is Charlie with some very important news. The Library of Life is having a book burning party, because a lot of the books are giving people the inner city and down home blues. Some of the books are unsuitable for children that are coming of age. Some of the books exposes much negativity from page to page. There are many books taking up space, because they are poorly written and offers no positive advice. The Library of Life attempted on several occasions to sell these undesirable books but they couldn't get a decent offer in price. Since there is more room available now, in the Library of Life, new books are being accepted on the basis of first come, first serve. If you're contemplating submitting books with no purpose, I urge you not to get the nerve. Before books are allowed to take up space, they will be screened. If your life hasn't been up to par at this junction, this would be a good time to get it cleaned. Do you know why my master and I like to write? Check it out. I write, because, I like spreading the word. Writing is a part of me. That have always been. I would like to think, I am blessed with this talent. And was destined to share. I write, because. It allows me to express. What I'm feeling inside. Always much to talk about. With the amount of time. I have to spare. Writing is my ventilation. For the thoughts. That are constantly floating around. In my head. To still them on paper. Guarantees a permanent stay. In print. My voice can be heard. By those who want to listen. I don't scream and I don't shout. I write in silence. And when I'm done, my words quietly lay. I write, because, it allows me, the freedom to say, what I want, when I want, and most importantly, how I want. Not a restriction in sight, to hold me back. However the flow may go, within my thoughts, that's the way of the appearance. On paper, nothing too fancy. Just plain old white and black. To be able to select. From the vast collection of memories. That are in and about my mind. Is much too much to measure. Every letter that forms into a word. That comes down my mental highway. Is very valuable. To be able to store. Them in print. Is my chest of treasure. When I write about family. The warmth of the reflections seems to fuel the fire. That allows me to really go deep. When I write about family. There is nothing to ashamed to talk about, whether it be good or bad. These memories, I will cherish and forever keep. When I write about my mama, there is never enough. I can't say, her gift of life, her guidance of love, and her presence of being, 
is the essence of my skill. To write. I write, because. It makes me feel good inside. Often. It is what the doctor ordered. Sometimes I find myself. Overdosing and reluctantly. Having to say good night. I write, because. I want to say something. To you and you. It's not directed at anyone in particularly. But if you are able to relate. Then I am glad. It was you. I was able to touch. I might be writing to say hello. I might be writing to say I miss you. I might be writing to thank you. And I might be writing to say I love you much. Whatever I write about. The sincerity is straight from the heart. Whether it be from experience. Hearsay. Or my own interpretation. I flow my thoughts. Until I'm done with the say. As long as. I have this safe deposit box of treasured thoughts. And more. Constantly coming in I foresee no conclusion. In writing tonight. Tomorrow. Or today. I write, because I want to spread the word. Often. I appreciate the thoughts. That passes through my mind. It would be selfish of me. To keep them locked up inside. If you can appreciate. What I write. Then it's only obvious. That I appreciate. What you read. Nice to know. You came along. For the ride. I write, because. I refuse to let go. Of what was right. I write, because. I refuse to let go. Of what could have been. I write, because. I refuse to let it come. To an end. I write. As an appreciation. For the people in my life. And for those. That have came on through. I also write. Because. Like basketball. It's truly my best memories and dreams. September 2nd, Hello to all of you out there and welcome to Bryant's world of thoughts, memories and dreams. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Charlie B. And for more than 10 years, I've been Bryant's special caretaker it seems. I was created by Bryant for one purpose and one purpose only. I would be his voice of expression any time during a reflection, even when he was lonely. Over the years, my voice has played a very important part in Bryant's outward pouring and of my services, I be very proud. Because of my strong and steady voice, Bryant is able to manipulate speaking out loud. Are there any of you out there that keeps a diary or some form of record, documenting your life? as it passes you by? The reason I asked you this question, I would like to take this moment and tell you why. Memories are made from happenings that occurs today and on a regular basis, they will accumulate. Our minds are used in a natural way to preserve everything that takes place from date to date. Unfortunately for some, the mind goes astray and their thoughts and memories are tangled up in a big mess. By utilizing my services, Bryant can rest assured that I have his back, if his mind decides not to be at its best. A lot of you are probably very curious as to what my job really consists of. If you have a little time to spare, please sit back and relax, while I explain beyond and above. My specific responsibility to Bryant is to record, as many thoughts and reflections that I can. My voice is used to convey whatever Bryant wants you to understand. There is a variety of topics that I've covered with my voice. Being who I am, I will gladly walk you through the course. When Bryant reflects on family, there's no ending in sight. For me to convey with clarity, I surely understand that I'm expected to do right. Over the years, Bryant has written much about his family and he hasn't been reluctant to cover the bitter with the sweet. The memories of growing up are fresh in his mind and because of this freshness, he is able to clearly reflect without skipping a beat. Bryant is one of eight siblings, in which he is the fifth from the bottom and the fourth from the top. When he selects a specific family member to write about, there's no telling when he will stop. Depending on what mood he might be in, today, he could be writing about his baby brother. When he writes about his parents, special attention is given to his mother. The love between Bryant and his family is like no other that I've come across. His parents raised a good crop of offsprings and the price tag for doing so was at a fraction of a cost. Hello, this is Charlie interrupting and I would like to apologize for doing so. Often, when I speak the words that Bryant writes, I become amazed as to the way they flow. One minute, I may be reading in a relaxed mode and then suddenly, I'm in a different mood. 
I've said this often and I'll say it again. Bryant is one creative dude. Some of Bryant's relatives have played a role in his life and for some of them, in his writings, he gives out a shout. Whether it was his favorite and or cousins, he wasted no words in showing his appreciation for their association in his life throughout. When Bryant was a young teenager, his Aunt Lizzie looked to him to be a role model for her boys with respect to teaching them the ropes of the street. All throughout his life, Bryant has always been one to challenge and against anyone, he would compete. Although he came from lesser means than his cousins, Steve and Tony Adams, Bryant would often measure his athletic success against the advantages they had over him. When it came to his association to his relatives, whether they were on his mother's side or his daddy's, he was never ashamed of them. Bryant and his cousin, Diane Britt, were very tight and certain people knew that for a fact. When she died at a very young age, on his life, it made a very big impact. For the great aunt that was like a grandmother to him, Bryant has often thanked the Almighty for the heaven sent. To have a special aunt like his Aunt Luvenia, a warm embrace, he will always extend. When it comes to his family history, Bryant is always searching for branches to the ancestral tree. On several generations, he's aligned the relationships in the order they should be. Charlie Interrupting If you were to compare me to a diary, who do you think would be the most requested? As the voice behind these writings of Bryant, on very few occasions, I've been contested. The joy of having a family can be so wonderful, and as you can see, Bryant don't waste any time with memory preservation. From sun up to sundown, he can write about the loves of his life and this is why I'm his reservation. I'm on call 24-7 and it doesn't bother me the least bit. When Bryant writes about his family, he goes the extra mile to commit. When he writes about his baby boy BJ the sensitive side of him creeps up on the scene and may remain there until he is finished. From the time BJ was born, it became very obvious to me that the thoughts and reflections of him would never diminish. When Bryant writes about his big boy, Troy, the sincerity of the reflection is pretty much the same. When he writes about his wife, don't need it, Bryant does it in a variety of ways, because he likes to enhance the reflection with a special twist. If you were to take a look at previous writings of Bryant's, you will see that his family makes up a large portion of the list. Charlie interrupting and I anticipate doing this for quite some time. I must take this opportunity to give Bryant some credit, because he really can rhyme. When Bryant writes, he makes it a point to cover as many topics as possible and I must admit, he does it well. As Bryant's caretaker of his thoughts, memories and dreams, I would love to tell. When he writes about black history, in the forefront is the discussion on slavery. In several writings, he's pointed out the men and women that exhibited a touch of bravery. From the first black millionaire to the Tuskegee experiments, to the Rodney King's beating and the consequences thereafter, Bryant keeps the occurrences alive. When Bryant first started utilizing my voice, I knew right then and there, that a star, had arrived. In writing about black writers and whites as well, Bryant got a lot of inspiration and as a result, was able to produce some wonderful work. The literary authors and their writings were very interesting and they had all kinds of effects on Kirk. Whether it was Langston Hughes, Zora Neale Hurston, the Grimm brothers or Hans Christian Anderson, Bryant connected and appreciated with much gratitude. When he dwelt on the topic of politics, I was confronted with the realization on how the common folk got screwed. To make a long story short, I will list the topics that Bryant often writes about and I will do it from a personal relate. The list includes, love, African Americans, sports, American and world history, art, literature, wars, disasters, friends, neighbors, employment, music, holidays, religion, health and medicine, and much, much more. Charlie interrupting for the last time. As I conclude this introduction of me to you and my purpose in Bryant's life, I would like to point out that the writings of Bryant's is in its prime. As I continue to voice his thoughts, I can feel the growth of his creativity and because of this, it will be just a matter of time, before I'm replaced. 
hopefully, that day will never come, and if it does, I will slowly fade away into deep space. In my final words, I want it to be known once again, that, I'm caretaker Charlie, a keeper of Brian's thoughts, memories and...